reverse stock split. This is something that's reserved for like penny green bean stocks. This is not something that I expect from the aspiring leader in sustainable transportation. That's yes, not man. something I want to read, man. In our video, we, we were talking about the $2 stock and it, it was going to go to $1. And possibly bankruptcy. At a dollar. It's now under a dollar. So we And we, we didn't even, I dollar. never, dude, I never even considered the idea of a reverse split. All right. Well, let's bring up the article about that we're going to have a reverse stock split. And the reason you do this, because if you're under a dollar, you get issued basically that you're a stock and you and we're going to kick you out of all right let me let me let, me let me let me say that better for you um no, 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 Okamoto, fuv whole um shareholders what he means is that if the stock is trading under a dollar you risk being delisted right and so you'll have to go back onto the otc market and so a popular strategy that these companies use and we talked about sundial growers is they do a, a reverse stock split now you're going to have either a five to one apparently or up to a 20 to one reverse stock split to make it clear a thousand shares if you bought it at a dollar, right? Right. A thousand shares, let's say it's 10 to one, you now have a hundred shares. That are worth $10 each. Yes. Right. And then your stock will go up in price, not in market cap, yes. only in price yes. that 10 times. So that $1 stock becomes $10. This is why they want to do it. But then this just gives more ammunition to the bears too. So it goes back down to under, you know, five bucks, four bucks, who knows? Well, exactly. Exactly. We'll read the article, but what I really wanted to get into is the strategy that would be involved if you do five to one or if you do 20 to one. Before we continue, please just hit the like, hit the subscribe. Hit that bell, you know, sign up to Patreon. It's $4.99. It's a cup of coffee. Inflation wise, it's basically like two bucks, honestly. So you might as well sign up and uh, join our Discord. It's free. Now. All right. And back to FUV story. <laughs> Arkimoto FUV stock sinks on reversed stock split plans. Arkimoto FUV stock isn't doing so hot on Wednesday after the company revealed plans for a reverse stock split. Specifically, the electric vehicle company intends to seek shareholder approval for a split during an upcoming meeting. That meeting is set for October 28th and will cover other matters that Arkimoto needs approval for. Sticking to the reverse stock split, Arkimoto wants approval from shareholders to consolidate its outstanding shares. This has the company aiming for a reverse stock split in the range of one one to five or one for 20. Yeah, I wonder if it's a, there's a, right, there's a range. One to five, two, one to 20, right, okay. FUV stock, why a reverse stock split? As Vitaly mentioned, they're seeking a stock split to keep its shares above the $1 minimum price needed to remain listed on the NASDAQ. The company initially adopted this plan when its shares were still trading above the $1 mark. However, as of this writing, shares currently sit at 87 cents. Oof. Arkimoto wants to avoid any potential delisting for a variety of reasons. First off, it would damage the EV company's image. The company also noted that a delisting could affect liquidity and weaken investor morale. Oh man, I don't know if you can weaken it much more than it is right now. Let's talk about this liquidity thing because you're you're reading it right now. The liquidity thing is re really important because this is why we had that important episode, take the money. Remember that episode yeah. that we released? Li that liquidity was on the is a, yeah, but like what, the other word for liquidity is, is cash. It's money. It's having it's cash, cash in, your in bank. the bank. The issue is they didn't take the money. They did such an amateur mistake. You know, they did like a retail investor's mistake in a bull market. <laughs> Basically, they didn't take the money to fund their operations for the next two, three years. Like they could have done that and none of this would, would have even matter. But now when you're doing a reverse stock split, it's harder to raise money because technically you want to dilute shareholders and raise more money and create more shares. Now they're going backwards. They're creating less shares, <laughs> right. making it easier for short sellers, making it harder for retail investors. So no one's going to want to buy these shares. I mean, honestly, at this point, I think they should just go private. Even I'm saying it, I have shares and I'm like, maybe they should just go private, get off the market or get fixed, come back with something that will actually make it because uh, they're going to be crushed. That's what's going to happen. That's what I think is going to happen. If they do the five to one, I'm not concerned as an investor that they're going to be diluting me anytime soon. If they go 20 to one, I do think that they're, that they would put the stock price up there so they can dilute, say back down to 10. And then still have enough room to fall that they don't risk getting delisted again. But if it goes five to one and it's a $5 stock and they say they dilute us 50%, it's now a 250. You're still within striking distance of that dollar and we have the same problem again. So when I saw 20 to one, that really made me nervous. I agree with you on everything except the one point that they have to dilute us anyway. No matter what happens, no matter how much they split, 
they need to dilute, create shares, because they need to raise money for operations, which they don't have. To be fair, they don't need to because they could find other sources of funding. In the conversations that we've had, the sense that I got is that this idea of continuing to dilute or dilute shareholders is just something that he wasn't comfortable with, and he preferred to tap the private markets. And I think ultimately that was a mistake. The last round of funding came from a, a private investor, and they worked out a deal where maybe that investment would turn into options or something. I'm not exactly sure. But I think the public put the money in the company, understanding that they could be diluted, but that's their way of investing in you. That's their way of saying, look, man, if I put in 10 grand of my money and you dilute me, whatever it is, 50%, whatever, I'm okay with that because I believe in the company. Now, the money's coming out of Arkimoto. The real retail investors seem pissed, so it didn't go to them. Someone made out like a bandit, and it wasn't the shareholders, and it wasn't Arkimoto. It's the short sellers. They made all the money. Yes. They made all the money, right? So then the short sellers oh. made all the money. I cannot understand the rationale because if you know that your company is so heavily shorted, why give them that? Remember when Mark told us, like, this really makes me angry, actually. When Mark said to us over and over, like, I care about shareholder value. I'm the biggest shareholder. And I kept saying, why aren't you raising money? As the biggest shareholder, you should be funded for the next couple of years. You know, we kept talking about this. Now it shows you that all of this caring about shareholder value, he has completely destroyed almost all shareholder value by, by being so precious with these initial shares and not selling into the market when it was at 30 bucks or 20 bucks or 17 bucks or whatever. It's the reason you go in, into a public market, okay? There's no reason to go public in this way on the NASDAQ or, or, or the New York Stock Exchange because you want to raise money as a company and then you want to keep raising money until you're profitable. This is not a new thing. This has been happening. The problem is they put themselves in such a bad situation about not caring about focusing on a product, not raising the capital needed to get that product to market. I know there's a, there's a hope out there. Like a lot of people in our comments are posting. Oh, there's I can see, yeah, there's a lot of hopium. <laughs> there's a lot of hopium out there. Absolutely. Yeah. And look, even that's why I didn't sell my shares at this point. First of all, they're worth almost nothing at this point. But the reason I didn't sell is because maybe there's this black swan event in reverse, right? <laughs> the reverse black swan what event. Is a, what, it, what would that even look like? They sell a bunch of FUVs. They get a contract for a thousand deliberators or 2000, whatever it is. It's a reverse black swan event that helps out shareholders. Let's go back to 2018, right? The reason Tesla survived is because the public markets were willing to accept the dilution that Tesla was. I forgot when they stopped diluting, but it was like probably 2018, 2019, somewhere around there, they stopped because the public markets were willing to give them money in exchange for shares because they believed in the mission because they saw the mission happening. They saw thousands of vehicles, 50,000 vehicles being sold. Tesla was showing that they were executing on yes. the vision. Mm -hmm. Robotic factories, like you saw it happening. And that's why even we started to believe and started to buy shares. We also saw them on the streets. I saw Teslas starting to appear on the road. Friends of mine would have it. I saw EV charges popping up at places that I worked and places that I would frequent, the mall or whatever it was. And you start seeing these vehicles around. But also Elon was a smart operator. He took the money, okay? He did dilute us and he took the money and he made sure he could fund operations for a long time. Mark had the same opportunity. That's what I keep going back to. He had the same opportunity to learn from other people's execution, to see how much money is needed to do this. He knew he need, even we knew, by the way, we knew he needed over a hundred million dollars. Even in our crappy little podcast, we kept discussing, yeah. this guy needs over a hundred million dollars. He has $10 million in the bank. This is last year. Yeah. Why don't you just raise the money right now when your stock is like twenty dollars? Okay, well That's we we have we have belabored that point across several videos. I think it's I know clear. Right? I'm still I, so salty. I know, I know, but I'm saying we have belabored that point. And for our viewers, returning viewers, we're sorry. Yes, they should have they they should have raised the money. It's kind of crazy to me. It's like I would never put myself in that position where I didn't have money for next month's rent. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Next month's mortgage, next month's food. Like I'd never I'd never do it, especially if I have two hundred fifty people working for me. I just I just wouldn't I wouldn't sleep at night. Another part of why Tesla was successful is during that time and that ramp up, Elon would let you know what his plans were. You're married now, but you remember when you're dating, right? There's this idea of playing hard to get. You play too hard to get. Eventually, some people lose interest. Nobody wants you. <laughs> yeah, they, no one's going to want you. And you've seen it even in the comments in our last video. A lot of the wait and see, stand by, check, you know, you can only do that for so long. I need something to keep me here. So this is our old chart looking back on Arkimoto for a lot, uh, the last three, four years. And what's amazing to me is that, first of all, we're underneath the lowest price it's ever been at, which was like 94 cents. 2020 was the low of Arkimoto's history, in, in its history, around 94 cents or so. And we are below that at 85 cents or so. It's kind of crazy. That it's means the, there- the market cap now? 
because it's got to be 25 million. The market cap right now is around 40 million because they keep diluting too. I think they're still selling, selling shares into the market. Yeah, but when we At first least, started uh, talking about it, it was a $50 million company. I know. In well, 2020, when we started talking about right, it. So it's $11 million. That's no small amount of money. <laughs> like, Well, yeah, let's face it. The progress in terms of the engineering progress, having the factory, all of that is actually so much more that they should be worth way, way more if they took the money early on and can survive it because then I think they would be worth more. But now at this price of 86 cents, I think everyone is just assuming they're going bankrupt or getting delisted or something's happening, but they're not going to be around on the NASDAQ for much longer. That's the assumption. I just want to show you like we, we had a video just a couple of days ago, in fact, where, and it was an older video that we didn't share with everybody, yeah. but it was around the $2 mark somewhere yeah. around here. And we were saying if it falls below two bucks, there's a dollar nothing, 50 yeah, is next. $1. 79, there's, it's free fall. If that breaks, it's a dollar. And then beyond that, we even mentioned that we don't know bankruptcy. That's what we mentioned. And the, honestly, like this is just speculating now. What we know, I would not be an investor. Like today, I am not buying shares. Let me put it. Although I want to point out, we do have a Discord where Carlos did buy shares. I did. Yeah, but you're you're, you're holding so many more shares at such a higher price point, it doesn't make sense for you at this point. You're either going to get some return on this or, or you're not. Like, you know what I mean? I consider it a loss already. So it's either all gone. Or you're going to get your 510X and it'll be a nice little payday. Where was it? Yeah, here it was. October 12th. So just to point out, this is for our our, our Discord members who uh, who sign up to our Patreon at 499 level. You get to see our trades and, and the fact that we're spending it on FUV. <laughs> yeah. This was like the day before the reverse stock split news. Honestly, had I have seen the news of the reverse stock split, I'm not saying I wouldn't have bought the shares, but I probably would have waited a few days to let it drop. Let's just look at their all-time high, $36, right? If they get to 80% of that, you know what? I'm okay. Because then the next day I bought- I, You know, that, that's, that's just gambling. <laughs> you agree that's gambling, right? Absolutely. But that's the gamble. The gamble is that there's such a massive upside for a relatively small investment. This is now a long shot bet. Technically, well, let's go back to the chart for a second, just to show it is the lowest RSI at 17 in the history of this company. I believe this is pretty much at the bottom of the RSI. So if I was to say there is any short term trade to happen, it's probably happening soon, but I'm not one to take that gamble. I'm not going to try this trade. Meaning if this if this was an easy, let's say this goes from 80 cents to $1.60, which is very possible because look at this. This is the trend line. If Arkimoto had a run, let's say there was some run in the market and everybody ran, it could run back up to like two bucks, no problem. But uh, honestly, there's so many other great investments in the market. I'm totally staying away from that. That's, that's the thing. Yes. This is for me is a technicals trade now more than it is fundamentals because I'm buying Tesla hand over fist. That's my play in this space. At this yeah. point, Arkimoto, Arkimoto needs something. They need, they need to announce either a massive order, something happening with ride share or they need, or something governmental, but I'm not too convinced that they can even fulfill those orders. Like, I don't know what's happening with the production. Do they have the supply chain to even fulfill these orders? Where are the people that are receiving their Arkimoto's right now? You know what I mean? Like, where are those people posting online? I got my Arkimoto today. Like I see very, very few. And now they're laying off people first of all so we haven't found out exactly who they're laying off i didn't i didn't see exactly who's being laid off a and keep the guy who's or, or fire the guy who's doing the commercial because he hasn't sold one commercial vehicle we need somebody to sell a thousand of these commercial vehicles and and get it produced and start feeding this whole network that they were talking about Wait, uh, now we're so, going to go into that conversation again man they're yeah, not we're not selling the deliverators bro like there's not dude dude they're selling the deliveries that's they said that that's what they're going to focus on they who's said Okay, they've had years to sell the delivery. I know, but I'm saying now Who's they're buying saying the delivery. Doing. Nobody's buying them. I didn't say they're buying them, but they are trying to sell them now. That's the goal. Think of the companies that would order the delivery, right? They would be uh -huh. nationwide companies with footprint all over the country. You can't have vehicles that really only work in, in right, uh, one well, We're, we're going in circles. I don't want to go back. This to is why delivery. we got to stop making FUV videos. It's the same thing. I was about to say, guys, this is our like one of our last episodes on FUV for a while. <laughs> That's for sure. Sure. sure, because I, I think we've said everything we wanted to say at this point until there's some new information to talk about. I think this is the last thing. I just want to bring this up. Today, Nicola, just the last thing to end this because it's a fun story. About time somebody got their canuppins. Canuppins, is that a word? Come-uppins. <laughs> uh, 
nubbins. <laughs> That's like when Trump tweeted Trevor Fillet, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> Trevor, no, hold on. Trevor come up in. Hold on. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so finally, Trevor Milton got his comeuppance. Okay. You're going to have to justify what's the connection here? Well, I, I felt it was another EV play. So, what's happening with all of these EV? Uh, we're focusing on FUV here, but if you look at every EV company now, basically besides Tesla and maybe a little bit of Rivian, they're all being totally smashed. Okay. We talked about Lion Electric. We talked about uh, Proterra. We had so many we talked about that they're all being smashed. Like FUV is not the exception here, okay? But some of them were, were smart enough to raise money. So actually, Nikola did raise the money. And today the news came out that Trevor Milton is is uh, being convicted of defrauding investors finally. And he might be going to jail. Nikola found that Trevor Milton was found guilty of three counts of criminal fraud on Friday in a case accusing him of spreading lies about the electric truck startup for his own personal benefit. A federal jury in Manhattan found Milton, 40, guilty of two counts of wire fraud and one count of securities fraud, with the top charge carrying a prison sentence of up to 25 years. According to Bloomberg and other news reports, Milton pleaded not guilty to all of the government's charges. Nikola gained notoriety in September 2020 when short seller Hindenburg Research alleged that the company had spun up an ocean of lies to deceive investors. Memorably, Hindenburg accused Nikola of releasing a deceptive video making it seem as if its Nikola 1 semi truck were traveling under its own power at a high rate of speed when in fact it was rolling down a hill. I don't need to be much more than that. I remember all of this. Anyway, okay, uh, that was the end of the FUV. I just Nicholas still, story. I just still, before we get this in the comments, like what, what made you think of the Trevor Milton thing? Because the implication is that Arkhamoto is defrauding investors. No, no, I actually don't think that's happening at all. But whether Arkhamoto gets lawsuits like this, Twitter suing Elon and all this, or someone suing Twitter, whatever it is, yeah. it's the same thing. Uh, absolutely, Arkhamoto's lawsuits are going to be piling on right now. Like there's, there's no doubt in my mind because we see what happens. As soon as uh, there's money lost in the stock market, everybody goes crying to their mother. And we have to get it all back. So yes, when institutional investors lose their money in the stock market, that's when the lawsuits happen. Unless they do a class action lawsuit. But like no, there's gonna be a people, class action. People that lost money market. on A L Y I are not getting a lawsuit anytime soon. You know what I mean? That's another electric vehicle startup that is like <laughs> I would not call it that. But, but I'm, I'm not implying anything that and Arkhamoto did not defraud anybody. If anything, they just made a hundred mistakes in a row and couldn't course correct. That's that's the only thing. Uh, and honestly, we took a risk. I'm not actually going to go sue anybody. I don't think so. I'm not following through on anything of that. But I just I thought that was interesting that uh, Trevor Milton is going to jail. And I'm not relating it to Mark at all. I think Mark is actually very genuine. He has nothing to do with defrauding anybody. He's just not a great financial operator of a business, I think. All right. So the conclusion is, guys, you have to like and subscribe. You have to join the <laughs> Discord. You have to support us on Patreon if you want. You can always cancel it. You can always unsubscribe, but we really were, we really expect to see you there. And so you can mourn with us. <laughs> but yeah, it's a tough time to be an Arkhamoto investor right now.